All right, welcome to our next video in the series. Today we are going to be talking about Lab 11, which is called Number Cruncher. It is our second lab that has to do with lists. So if you have not done any work with lists, stop here, go back. Um, there was a previous lab called Mad Libs that we should work on. There are some other introductory videos that talk about what lists are, how they work, how we search through them, which is something called list traversal. And those are both important skills to have before you attempt to do something like number cruncher. All right, well, here's the idea. Um, we want to be able to glean useful pieces of information about the lists that we create. So, for example, I might have a list of numbers, a bunch of random numbers. I might want to sum those up. What's the total of all those numbers? Maybe I'd want to get the average. Um, those represent two of the easier kinds of numbers that we could get from our lists. Next, maybe I would want to know, does a list contain a negative number? Um, would we consider the list to be increasing? Um, what is the maximum value of the list? Um, and by increasing, we mean that every value is either equal to or greater than the one that came before it. So the item at location one is smaller or equal to than the item at location two, which is smaller than three, which is smaller than four. So at minimum, it has to continue going up. That's what we mean by increasing. At the more difficult end of the spectrum is actually changing the contents of the list based on some criteria we set. So make all positive means if there are any negative values in the list, we would want to change those values to their positive forms. If it's a negative eight, it becomes a positive eight. If it was a positive seven, it stays a positive seven. So we can make all values positive. And the last thing that we want to try and figure out is called, uh, you could call it only evens. I think some people call it remove odd elements, something like that. But it's where you go through a list and you take out anything that is an odd number, leaving only the even numbers. So what does this look like? Well, I'm going to go ahead and flip over actually to my code. And here I have, before you get overwhelmed, let me break it down for you. Here I have all of my code that tests these functions out. And the reason I did this is because I wanted you to be able to benefit. So if I were to say, execute this code, then this program does something that we haven't talked a lot about before. Instead of saying where the sprite shows a piece of text for a temporary time, I actually ask the sprite to write this information on the screen. The reason I do that is because we run a whole bunch of tests, right? I think there are, you know, there's four different lists and I think there are seven different features to test. So I think there might be 28 different tests that happen here at least, if I'm doing my math right. Um, and so this is the output when you run each of these operations over the lists I've defined. So I'm gonna shrink this for a second. We'll, we'll come back to it in a minute. But what is it that you're looking at? Well, I defined four lists uh, based off of four mathematical series that I like, right? There's pi, the first seven digits of pi, first seven of e, which is a mathematical constant, 2.71. Fibonacci is here. And then I just did a cubic. Um, and then what I did was I broke it down into parts. What's the sum of all of those? Well, you can find the sum up here. What's the average? Well, that part's right here. And at this point, um, we're using something new called custom blocks. Now, there's going to be a video about uh, what a custom block is, how to build a custom block. If you haven't seen that yet, you should go watch that first. Otherwise, this won't make a lot of sense. Excuse me. But um, what we're looking at here is this sum of pi block takes my pi list as an input and something that's contained in sum goes through all of the items in that list, collects it together, and then prints out the result. And sure enough, if you add 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, and 2, you get 25. That's correct. That's the sum of all that's pi. So in this uh, couple of scripts that I built here, we get the sum of all four lists. We get the average of all four lists. We determined which lists contain a negative value, which ones are increasing. What's the maximum value of all four lists? And then I ran out of space, so I did commit somewhat of a programming crime. I put some of my custom blocks in custom blocks 
that's generally too complex, especially for the new programmer. So I would advise against it. But if I look inside the test positive block, I would see that it is testing all of the uh, other ones, right? So let's go ahead and make all the values of pi positive and then go ahead and write out those elements. Okay, so here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna give you this document. I'm gonna share this link to this file that I've created, but the shared version that I give will have all of the custom blocks will be empty and it will be up to you to make sure that all of the custom blocks are filled in and work the way that they're supposed to. And you will know they're working the way they're supposed to if the output of your code matches the output of the code that I've put here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and solve the first one with you guys. I'm gonna show you what the sum feature looks like and then you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to do the rest for yourself. So to get to the custom block, we say edit. And here is how I solved the sum problem. So I made a custom block that has the title sum of, and then it's got a input slot, which I specified has got to be a list. Remember, if you want to decide that your custom block needs an input, you just click on that object. You decide, is it just a title or is it an input? And then if it is an input, you can decide, hey, what kind of an input's it going to be? Well, I want this little hamburger symbol right here. I want this to be the list. So I say, give me the sum of a list. Then I make a script variable, which remember is just a temporary variable. It exists only for this script right here. And I'm gonna set sum to zero. And then I'm gonna use that for each loop. Remember the job of the for each loop is to go through every item in list. And every, so if there's five items, it'll go five times. If there's 50 items, it'll go through 50 times. Every time it goes to the loop, it grabs out the next element and it refers to that element as item. So if I was for eaching pi, the first time through the loop, item is three. The next time through the loop, item is one. The next time through the loop, item is four, and so on and so forth. So I just change the sum by item, and when that's all done, I do what we do in these custom reporter blocks. I go ahead and report the sum out. And what I've done is that sum that got reported, I put it inside of a join block, so that we say what's the sum of pi and then we feed the list pi to the custom block and the number that's reported got printed out right there. So right away you can probably get a sense of all right how is sum supposed to work we've seen the solution to that. Sum and average are pretty similar we just got to figure out how to divide by the number of elements um, so you want to figure that out uh, and then uh, from there I will leave it up to you to figure out how to handle contains negative value how to handle is increasing, how to handle uh, max value, so on and so forth. I want to give a couple other tips before we sign off, uh, and here they are. First, when we consider contains a negative value, I think it's easy to think that we want an if-else uh, statement in our for each loop, and I'm going to talk about why we don't want to do that. So let's say I had opened up the contents of contains a negative value. Well, you're going to find a for each loop in there. And let's say what I'm doing right now is I'm going to go through each uh, item in pi. And I want to check if it's positive or negative. This is a very common mistake I see, and I just want to address it real quick. Let's say I were to say um, if... If item is less than zero, then let's go ahead and report. Where's report? I passed it. Let's go ahead and report true. There is indeed a negative value in that list. And if not, we're going to report false. So think for a moment what is the logical flaw in this code? Well, the logical flaw is because reporting stops the loop and it just kind of shuts off the custom block, that if the first element is negative, it'll return true. If the first element is positive, it'll return false, regardless of whether or not there's a negative value later on in the list. So we want to make sure that when we are building our code for containing a negative value, we actually just want to say, uh, look, if you find a negative value, go ahead and return true. 
if I make it the whole way through the list and I can't find a, a negative value, then we'll report false. There is no negative value in the list. So that's my tip for how to tackle contains negative value. Um, for P, for is increasing, the trick to this one is remembering that you're going to have to track what was the last number and what was the current number. And to this, my suggestion is, I think it's useful to set a temporary variable called a script variable. And I like to call it last number. And the way that last number works is you'll check, hey, um, is the item I'm currently looking at uh, is it less than the last number? If it is, then it's not increasing and we can return false. And then when you're done making that comparison, you just set last number, oops, set last number to the current number you're looking at. So I remember making, I recommend making an extra variable for is increasing uh, that will take care of that. Maximum value, I feel like students are typically pretty successful for, so I'm not especially worried. Um, and then the last one is how do we modify lists using our custom blocks? And the one piece of advice I can give is I recorded a 29 minute video about the different ways to traverse a list. And you're definitely gonna need to see that whole thing to be able to solve test positive and test odd remover or make all list, make um, every element positive and remove all odd items. And the reason is the for each loop does not work if you're trying to modify the contents of a list. You need to do something called making an index loop. I won't cover that here because I covered it in detail in the other, um, in the other video, uh, but it's more work, it takes more time. Be patient with yourself and please do email me if you have any questions. All right, that is Lab 11. I wish you happy programming.